Salmonella paratyphi was first discovered in 1896 by German bacteriologist Fritz Schauden. Salmonella paratyphi is a strain of the Salmonella enterica species, which is a common cause of foodborne illnesses. This particular strain, Salmonella paratyphi, is responsible for causing paratyphoid fever, a bacterial infection with symptoms similar to those of typhoid fever but generally milder. Paratyphoid fever is transmitted through the consumption of contaminated food or water, and its symptoms include fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Although paratyphoid fever is less severe than typhoid fever, it can still pose a significant public health concern, particularly in regions with poor sanitation and limited access to clean water. The infection route of Salmonella paratyphi, which causes paratyphoid fever, is primarily through the fecal-oral route. This means that the bacteria are spread when an individual ingests food or water that has been contaminated with feces containing the Salmonella paratyphi bacteria. The contamination can occur in various ways, such as Contaminated water sources Drinking water or using it for washing and cooking can be contaminated if it comes into contact with sewage or fecal matter containing the bacteria. Food contamination Food can become contaminated during production, handling, or preparation if it comes into contact with infected feces or contaminated water. This is especially common in raw or undercooked meat, poultry, seafood, eggs, and raw fruits and vegetables. Poor hygiene. Poor personal hygiene, such as not washing hands properly after using the toilet or before preparing food, can lead to the spread of the bacteria from an infected individual to others through food or shared surfaces. Contaminated objects. Touching surfaces or objects contaminated with feces containing Salmonella paratyphi, and then touching one's mouth, can also lead to infection. Once ingested, the Salmonella paratyphi bacteria pass through the stomach and enter the small intestine, where they invade the intestinal lining and multiply. In some cases, the bacteria can spread to other parts of the body, such as the bloodstream, liver, spleen, and bone marrow leading to more severe symptoms and complications. Salmonella paratyphi causes paratyphoid fever, a bacterial infection with symptoms that can be similar to those of typhoid fever, but generally milder. The symptoms of paratyphoid fever typically develop within one to two weeks after exposure to the bacteria and may include fever. A sudden onset of high fever is common, which may be persistent or fluctuate during the course of the illness. Headache. Moderate to severe headache is a frequent symptom associated with paratyphoid fever. Weakness and fatigue. Infected individuals often experience general weakness and fatigue, making it difficult to carry out daily activities. Abdominal pain. Pain or discomfort in the abdomen, particularly in the lower right side, can occur due to inflammation of the intestines or other organs. Diarrhea or constipation. Changes in bowel habits, such as diarrhea or constipation, are common symptoms. Diarrhea may be more frequent in severe cases, while constipation is more common in milder cases. Nausea and vomiting. Nausea, vomiting, or both may be present in some individuals, particularly during the early stages of the illness. Loss of appetite. A decreased appetite or complete loss of appetite can occur, often leading to weight loss. Rashes. In some cases, a rash of small, flat, rose-colored spots, called, rose spots, may appear on the chest, abdomen, or back. Enlarged spleen or liver. In more severe cases, the spleen or liver may become enlarged, which can be detected during a physical examination. If you suspect that you or someone you know may have paratyphoid fever, it is essential to seek medical attention promptly. Early diagnosis and appropriate treatment can help prevent complications and reduce the risk of severe illness or death. The treatment of Salmonella paratyphi infection, which causes paratyphoid fever, primarily involves the use of antibiotics, along with supportive care to manage symptoms and prevent complications. Here are the key components of the treatment. Antibiotics. The primary treatment for paratyphoid fever is antibiotics to eliminate the Salmonella paratyphi bacteria from the body. The choice of antibiotic depends on the local antibiotic resistance patterns, the severity of the infection, and the patient's individual circumstances. Commonly used antibiotics include fluoroquinolones, e.g., ciprofloxacin, cephalosporins, 
e.g., ceftriaxone, and azithromycin. It is crucial to complete the full course of antibiotics as prescribed to ensure the infection is effectively treated and to minimize the risk of antibiotic resistance. Supportive care. In addition to antibiotics, patients may require supportive care to manage their symptoms and maintain their overall health. This can include fever and pain management, over-the-counter medications like acetaminophen, paracetamol, or ibuprofen can help reduce fever and relieve pain. Hydration. Drinking plenty of fluids is essential, as fever and diarrhea can lead to dehydration. Oral rehydration solutions or intravenous fluids may be necessary in more severe cases. Nutritional support. Consuming a balanced diet and maintaining a healthy caloric intake can help promote recovery and prevent weight loss. Monitoring and follow-up. Patients with paratyphoid fever should be closely monitored by their healthcare provider throughout their treatment. This may involve follow-up appointments and additional tests to ensure that the infection has been successfully treated and to monitor for any potential complications. Treatment of complications. In some cases, paratyphoid fever can lead to complications, such as intestinal perforation, abscesses, or septicemia. These complications may require additional medical interventions, such as surgery or more aggressive antibiotic therapy. It is essential to seek medical attention promptly if you suspect you or someone you know may have paratyphoid fever. Early diagnosis and appropriate treatment can significantly improve the chances of a full recovery and reduce the risk of complications.